Hello lovely people, this week I am here to chat to you about Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. Before we go any further in, I will just say I have a bit of a cold and I sound all stuffy. Now you know why. <laughs> so, Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. This was written way back in 2009, when that phrase didn't have any other connotations. What a world we live in. I've read a handful of Just Before books by now, and I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them, and this was no exception. So, as you might be able to tell from the cover, this is all to do with colour. So, the way that the society in this book works is that um, it's all based around colour and about social hierarchies are dependent upon what colours you can perceive. So at this point, um, essentially this is a, uh, a distant future, but by this point all of um, like society can't perceive the full spectrum of colour. They can see, um, you, take, you take like a test essentially, and that test measures how much you can perceive of each colour and then based on how much you can perceive you get given like uh, a ranking and stuff like this and so within this society like the top top of society are purples and the lowest of societies are greys and our main character Eddie he is a red. Red is not like it's not super high up on the hierarchy but Eddie has a sneaky suspicion that he's going to come out with a very high percentage of red, so he's, he's interested to see where his future will go. As with all Jasper Ford books, there's this sort of humour and absurdity that runs throughout, so the society that he set up, um, it follows rules to the extreme, which results in some really absurd concepts, like um, they have all these rules, um, they're, it's after the guy who invented, like, they're named after the guy who invented, like, the colour perception test or something. Um, like, there's loads of references to, like, people who are big in the world of colour. <laughs> um, but I just, I had to Google to find out who they were, to be honest, because I am not big in the world of colour. But, um, so, uh, they have all these rules, essentially, laid down to them by this person, and, for example, it doesn't say anything about being able to produce spoons. So, also there's something there's something to do with the fact that essentially they they now have a spoon shortage because it's in the rules that they can't make new spoons. So like spoons become like a really hot topic, and just like these these moments of absurdity, um, just are peppered throughout in like that most delightfully like quirky like Jasper Ford kind of way. So the basic plot setup of this book is quite similar to a lot of dystopians because Eddie is our main character. Eddie's dad is essentially like a doctor, but in this world what doctors do is they show you swatches of colour and different colours provoke different reactions within you. So he's a swatchman. So Eddie's dad is assigned to this place called East Carmine and Eddie goes with him. And um, it's that sort of thing where Eddie is just living his life. He wants to do the typical things of like he's trying to woo a really fancy lady and stuff like this. And then he moves to this place and then he meets this grey called Jane and meeting Jane fundamentally changes how he views the world in many ways because it makes him start to question things and as so often happens in dystopian things when you start to question how everything works you start to uncover that there's things that people would prefer hidden lying underneath um, now I won't tell you anything more because I don't want to spoil things um, and I'll just talk about how my reading experience of this was so I very much took a little while to get into this. I was not not enjoying it, it was a perfectly fine just before to read, but it took me until, I want to say halfway through, but it might even be like three quarters of the way through, and then all of the threads which had been being set up and laid down throughout like the first part of the book, suddenly I started to see how they were all going to come together. So, um, if you are someone who is reading this book, or wants to read this book, and you initially find that you're, you're like, you're like, it's fine, but I'm not like, like, drawn in that much, um, I would say persevere, because there was definitely a point that I reached with this, where I suddenly went, oh, things starting to kick into gear, and I think the last quarter of this book is absolutely cracking. I will, of course, not tell you what happens, because no spoilers here, but what I will say is the last quarter I was already loving, and then the final chapter and the final couple of lines just made me go, oh, fuck. 
in that way that happens when you have realizations and when you suddenly a character has a, a defining moment or a defining choice and they make a decision and then you just suddenly see how this is going to affect them for their entire life going forward and that sort of a thing so I I was initially I was initially mildly hesitant about this but by the end of it I now think it's a really interesting and a really quite unique like take on a dystopia whilst the plot initially is that sort of traditional dystopian plot like boy meets girl girl opens boy's eyes boy starts to discover things about society blah 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 actually um the way the type of society that this is I've never read anything like this and and where we go by the end I do think there's enough like originality here that it's not just like a play-by-play -play of a dystopia if that makes sense that's everything I have to say on this. I just wanted it to be like a little quick little blip of why I... This book stayed with me, essentially, and I have like all of these thoughts, and I would like someone else to read it, so then we can talk about that final chapter, though. That would be great. Uh, have you read any Jasper Ford? Have you read this Jasper Ford? How do you feel about them? What are your dystopian preferences? Just let me know all these things in the comments below. Have a lovely week, and I will see you next time.